Haley Trejo. Like you said, I'm a physical anthropologist, which basically just means I like studying really, really old stuff with a particular focus on old bones. Now, what we're looking at right here is pretty modern for me. This is around 40,000 years old. It's a cave painting from Chauvet Cave. Very beautiful. Keep an eye on this, because you're going to see it again later in the show. Now, I wanted to start out by giving a definition for art. Now, I'm sure this would make any art historian cringe, but this is what works for me as a physical anthropologist. Now, what I believe art is, is that it's the ability to comprehend and recreate symbolic imagery. Now, I know that can sound a little bit wordy, so let me give you an example. Chimpanzees have the capacity for art. A chimpanzee that has been taught sign language has this capacity. When you make an image with your hands that has symbolic meaning attributed to it, the chimpanzee can see that and go, oh, I know what they're saying. And then they can recreate that and make something in response. And that's just what my definition for art is. So then you might say, well, if chimpanzees have a capacity for art, that means that art isn't something that's special to humanity. Which brings me to my next point, you're not special. <laughs> now, I'm sure there are lots of people who think you're very special. But from a genetic standpoint, from a biological standpoint, you're not. <laughs> you are 50% banana. <laughs> Humans share 50% of their genetic material with bananas. We are literally living, walking, talking banana splits. <laughs> Beyond that, you might say, okay, well, I'm the top of the food chain because I have two legs, I'm bipedal, and I have opposable thumbs. Sure, it sounds nice. But well, when you think about it, I would personally trade all of my appendages for tentacles any day. <laughs> but all jokes aside, where it starts to get really interesting, it's when we start talking about behavior. And we find that there are still plenty of similarities here. One of the ones that is always cited in any special talking about humanity is that humans are the cruelest, we're the meanest, we have the most capacity for cruelty, which sounds like a pretty good view of humanity, and not good, but sounds truthful in some ways. But well, then, when you think about the natural world, chimpanzees just have this capacity as well. Chimpanzees have, have been shown to have genocidal tendencies, and not only that, they can commit acts of random violence. So, so far as we're covered on meanness, it doesn't really hold up. On the flip side, some people say, okay, well, what about empathy? We have such empathy, we're able to feel so much for so many other people. But, still doesn't hold up. Elephants have been shown to have this sort of empathy, this feeling. And they don't only feel it within their own group, but they can feel it for their human handlers. They can show empathy that's crossing species. That's something that's very complex. So then we see that empathy is not something special to humans either. Finally, then we say, okay, okay, well, Put the emotion stuff aside. What about something that's a little bit harder to think about? What about culture? Well, whales have been shown to have culture. If you think about culture as something that differentiates one group of a specific species from another group, whales definitely have culture. <laughs> whales have songs, and they have songs that are specific to their pods. And they differ between different groups, so that's culture. So then you're left with a really nihilistic view of humanity going, well, crud, I guess we're not that special anyway. Which isn't true. Humans are special because we've had the same genetic grab bag, the same physical grab bag, as every other animal on the planet. But what makes us special is that we've taken it farther than anything else. Yeah, we have New York, dolphins don't have Atlantis. Yet. <laughs> And when we start to really see things progress like that, we see this differentiation begin 50,000 years ago in the Upper Paleolithic. This is from Lascaux Cave. It's beautiful. And what you don't really realize when you're looking at cave art is how big they are. These were people who had huge artistic tendencies and capacities. It's beautiful. And not only art. Interestingly enough, technology had a huge boom in the Upper Paleolithic. These are from millions of years ago. This one right here, two million years old, from Tanzania, Old White Gorge. It was not made by modern humans, like those of the cave paintings I've been showing you. 
These were made by Australopithecines, ancestors of the modern human. This is about two million years old. This is one million years old. So you see, over time, there's this progression. But ultimately, there's no diversity. Yes, there's a linear progression, but we don't have that many tools. And this trend continues until 50,000 years ago during the Upper Paleolithic. And we have a huge explosion of tools as well. Something that would make Home Depot absolutely soft. It's great. <laughs> but then the question leaves, why 50,000 years ago? What's so special about 50,000 years ago? And this is a video. It's very, very cool because it's a Chave cave. They're only let a few researchers in every year to get to see it. So what you're seeing here is very special, so keep this in mind as I'm talking. There are two explanations for the renaissance of the Upper Paleolithic. The first one is a biological explanation, and it goes like this. 50,000 years ago, there was a random genetic mutation, and that gave humans the capacity for artistic and innovative thought. Now, genetic mutations spread by appropriation. So then you might say, okay, well, how does being artistic equal getting laid? I'd like to know that, too. <laughs> and the way that I think about that is by thinking about happy little trees. Bob Ross is very likable. Everybody goes, man, Bob Ross was real neat. And this was partially because of his awesome afro, but also because of his artistic capabilities. So Bob Ross of 50,000 years ago would have had a great time painting happy little cave bears and having lots of sex. <laughs> so that's one theory. 50,000 years ago, random genetic mutation. Everybody has lots of sex, innovation spread throughout humanity, and here we are today. That's one theory. It's not my favorite. The one that I like, and the one that most people really think about, is one that focuses more on social and environmental factors. This one goes like this. 50,000 years ago, we're smack dab in the Ice Age. It's cold. And I know we're all from Florida, but if it's cold, what do you do? You don't sit around outside and go, man, this sucks. You go inside, you get warm, you go by a fire, you get some hot cocoa, and you settle down, and it's nice. That's just what these people did 50,000 years ago. Maybe sans the hot cocoa, but everything else, pretty much. So these people were moving up out of Africa, mo anatomically modern people moving up into Europe and into caves. And this close living quarters, alongside a huge jump in population, made people act differently. Yeah, if you're in a big room of people, you're going to act differently than if you're at home. So this different change in behavior made it so people had to think differently. We had to think innovatively. And this is spread into modern day. All right. This is a picture of a cave wall from Argentina. It's about 13,000 years old. Now, though that isn't as old as some of the other stuff I've talked about, people have been putting their hands on cave walls since 40,000 years ago. It's a very popular practice. Now, what I want you guys to do is I want you to look at your hand. Look at the front, look at the back, look at your fingers, look at the hand of the person sitting next to you. And then when you look at these hands on this cave wall, you realize that they're not different. That means that these people, 50,000 years ago, had the same hands as you. That means you have the same hands as the people who painted the first cave art in Chauvet. You have the same hands as Nikolai Tesla. You have the same hands as Mary Curie. You have the same hands as Bob Ross. So the next time you go and say, hey, I'm not that creative, just remember you have 50,000 years of technological innovation and creativity. Thank you. <laughs>